Church, ARA. I am the Minneapolis Police Chief. For the last several days, Minneapolis police officers have been on the block behind me, uh, the 3500 block of Grand Avenue South, uh, where we had uh, a residence surrounded uh, in an attempt to arrest an individual who committed a shooting from inside the residence uh, last Wednesday. Minneapolis police uh, exhausted all of our efforts uh, to peacefully uh, bring the situation to resolution uh, without prior to escalating uh, the use of force with a SWAT team and special tactics. Minneapolis police officers waited for days uh, for the individual to emerge from the house, and he never did. Officers were, however, able to confirm that the individual was inside. Officers made contact with the individual's family multiple times in an attempt to gather as much information as possible about the individual, his mental health history, uh, as well as uh, hi history of other factors uh, that may be dangerous. We also consulted with a psychiatrist uh, to get as much information as possible about what to do and what not to do uh, while trying to peacefully resolve this situation. We had identified issues of concern, uh, including issues uh, that the, the individual uh, had both firearms inside and also had knowledge of uh, improvised explosive devices. Uh, thankfully, uh, our officers uh, were able to peacefully arrest this individual tonight uh, after several hours of a SWAT operation. Uh, this was a plan that was put into motion uh, earlier today. We called in dozens of officers to assist, including members of our SWAT team, our drone team, crisis negotiators, uh, patrol, as well as command staff. Uh, and I'm thankful to report that after a series of, of steps that were taken very methodically, very systematically, uh, constantly giving announcements and advising the individual what we were doing each step of the way. Uh, ultimately, the individual was safely emerged from the house uh, prior to us uh, needing to uh, uh, insert gas uh, into the house. That was our next step that we were prepared to do. We told the individual we were about to do it. Uh, and immediately prior to that, about 1.24 a.m., he, uh, he emerged from the rear of the residence and, and surrendered. Um, so this is an example of what de-escalation looks like uh, and, and, and how we strive for every day peacefully resolving situations. Uh, and the fact is, this is not something that's unusual. This is what our officers and our SWAT team do every day. They do it the right way. Uh, they, they, they comply conducting risk, risk assessments whenever we execute search warrants like we do. Uh, and, and, and I'm proud of the work that the officers did here tonight. And I'm thankful that we have a peaceful resolution finally with this individual in custody. That being said, the, the investigation remains ongoing. Uh, we have not completed a full search of the residence. We will be doing that, uh, and that will take some time. Uh, and as of right now, we have not yet recovered uh, the firearms that we believe are still inside the house. The individual uh, um, obviously has mental health issues uh, and clearly is a hoarder. So it will take time uh, for, for officers to conduct a thorough search of the residence. And I'll pass it off to the mayor for, for comments. I'm deeply grateful for the work of our Minneapolis police officers. What we had tonight was an extraordinarily dangerous situation. Uh, you have an individual with mental illness, uh, likely possessing firearms, uh, with knowledge of explosive devices, and all this happening in a residential area. Uh, that is a cocktail that could erupt at any moment uh, and requires uh, both the kind of tenacity, but also the willingness to do this right. Our officers did this the right way. Is this an exception to the rule? No. This is the work that our officers are doing each and every day. This happens to be the one that has been highlighted. I know there have been several individuals out there, including council members, uh, telling them to immediately barge in, to do this the wrong way. I stand with our police officers. Doing this the right way takes courage. Uh, it takes the willingness to de-escalate a tense situation. It takes resources. It takes a whole lot of people that are were standing behind me just a few moments ago uh, to make sure that the surrounding neighborhoods are safe, that the perpetrator is ultimately arrested, and that justice is served. Today, 
Uh, justice was served thanks, thanks to our incredible Minneapolis police officers, and I'm grateful to them. Last thing I just wanted to add and uh, open up for any questions. Uh, we, did, uh, we did have arrangements made uh, to relocate residents, uh, and when we, we made that offer available, but uh, we had none that took it. Uh, so everyone that was here uh, remained for the duration uh, uh, inside, inside their homes. Are there any questions? Is the man taken to Hennepin County Jail? Uh, he is taken downtown, uh, and he will be booked into the jail. He's being interviewed at this time. Yep. Um, also, you're saying in the spirit of de-escalation, how many <laughs> steps does it take to get from this contact to eventually going inside? So I, I think, uh, you know, just what you said, initial contact is what we had been trying to make unsuccessfully. Um, tried dozens of phone numbers, dozens of emails, uh, tried you know, the use of the psychiatrist, the use of family to make contact, uh, including then in the situation here that happened tonight, uh, including uh, you know, inserting a, a phone into the residence and calling constantly, uh, making these announcements, using negotiators, uh, making announcements uh, you know, over, over a loudspeaker. Um, so it is really... Uh, prior to getting to this, doing a thorough risk assessment, trying to, to uh, acquire as much information as possible, social media, family, uh, mental health, and otherwise, history, uh, to ensure that we're prepared and that we're prepared about the knowledge of the interior uh, of the building and anybody else that might be there. So um, it is simply just trying to take uh, and learn as much information as possible and then following it to its logical conclusion until you run out of options mm -hmm. uh, and that you realize this person is a survivalist has, and, and is likely not coming out for some time. Uh, and then just gradually taking those steps uh, and, and letting them know along the way, this is exactly what we're doing. Uh, and, and I'm proud of the, the extensive planning that went into this. Uh, and I'm just thankful for the result because ultimately you can do all of these things and make all, all of these steps, uh, but an individual still does not comply or just chooses not to go peacefully. Any other questions? No. Um, some people are saying that uh, I guess the first uh, first. I'm I'm reading from my my reporter who yep. wants me to ask this question. Sure. Um, uh, that the victim filed reports. Yep. Nineteen times, and was still, is still in the hospital now. Yes. With a gunshot wound. Yep. Um, some people may say it's slow and act. Yep. And, and it should have been acted on. More yes, uh, that is accurate. Yes. Um, while there were dozens of attempts, literally dozens of attempts prior to the shooting uh, to make contact with this individual and to take him into custody, the police were unable to make contact with this individual uh, since April, since it was confirmed that there were warrants for his arrest. Um, and, you know, that included uh, doing surveillance uh, early in the morning during the one time that we had reason to believe he might uh, be leading, leading, leaving the residence. Uh, and so there was extensive work, uh, by our officers to try and make contact, to try and bring this person into custody. And we were unsuccessful. Uh, and so in that sense, yes, we failed, we failed this victim. Uh, he should not have been shot. Uh, but I will say this, we had no reason to suspect, uh, that he would shoot the, shoot the neighbor from inside the house. Uh, and ultimately what precipitated the shooting uh, was the, the, the cutting of a tree uh, that this individual had planted with his mother, who apparently he had a very deep attachment to. Uh, and that's ultimately what prompted the shooting, we believe. Yeah. Thanks so much for hanging Thank out until 2 in the morning.